You may remember that the last time the three of us got together, well, we're missing Poppy. We wish her well. We did this in March, and we talked about banks. The banks, Josh. Uh, you like some, not others. Well, we've been overweight, but we're, we're emphasizing quality. Since then, J.P. Morgan has, I believe, as you put it, unqualitied itself yes, thanks to it the London Whale. disqualified Wales. itself. One of the things we were trying to accomplish was to say this market is running and it's favoring the biggest losers of last year. And so that was a trade that was pretty constructive. We also own some non-bank financials, mm -hmm. Visa, MasterCard. These things are making new highs still. I think the problem with something like a J.P. Morgan, it was the last one left where institutions, regular investors could look at it and say, hey, these guys actually know what they're doing. These guys aren't a complete debacle. And then, of course, that wasn't good. They had to screw that up. There seems to be no momentum in the stocks right. or in the earnings growth. Yeah. What do you think, Lee? Do you still hate them or do you now love them because they're so beaten down? No, I didn't like them, you know, three months ago. What this mean? is not, first I'm of all, banks. I'm up eight okay, points you in take three a, You take a cat. It doesn't matter if it's alive or if it's a dead. You drop it off the Empire State, the thing's going to bounce. You know, I gave Josh that it's the highest quality mm -hmm. thing, but it's the highest quality within a really bad sector. I don't like companies that make their money simply on financial engineering. The average investor out there can never understand what they're really doing. And there's a lot of great hedge fund runners like a Seth Klarman's of the world who will say, I don't even invest in financials anymore because I don't know what they do. So I would stay away from the sector. And I think it's also uh, you know, a pretty good indicator of how much you can lose buying a really high quality company that's opaque. Are there, Josh, any financials, maybe not the big banks, but just bread Again, and butter banks that areas, might be safer ways to I, invest? I, I you don't have to could, worry about a London could, whale coming out of nowhere. I think you could skip the banks entirely. The non-bank financials are phenomenal here. Things like credit card processing. Mm -hmm. You look at Visa, you look at MasterCard, they're taking zero credit risk for the customer. It's basically a secular trend. The economy is totally irrelevant. Every day, more spending is not done with cash and is starting to be done with credit card transactions online, et cetera. Have we had this this turn yeah, in market sentiment where been, basically the, second quarter has the been, crap of 2011 rose in the first quarter of 2012 and now it's back down in the dregs again? The second quarter has been an incredible comeuppance for people that were out there chasing you know, things like emerging markets, things like high beta tech stocks, right. because they gave back pretty much all the gains at this point. I worry sometimes when I look at places like Stock Twits and Twitter, uh, you know, other social media sites where you'll see investors hype stocks that are, you know, because of the price action and the momentum. And the argument is, oh, wow, it hit a new 52 week high and it just hit another new one. So there must be more upside. Did you not live during 1998, 1999, 2000? It just kind of scares me. So do you think that there's any value to be had in looking just at momentum or do people still have to do things like, you know, classic Grantham, you know, classic Graham and Dodd valuation methods? So I think that what you have to do is you have to figure out statistically, are you in a value oriented market or are you in a momentum oriented market? Well, we do too much on Twitter, on stock twits, on this show, on CNBC, every place is that we try to give mythology and some type of story to why we're buying what we're buying. You know, we want to give an idea to investors that there's really a reason why we're looking at dividend stocks, or there's really a reason why we're buying the NASDAQ or Apple. And I'll tell you what the reason is, is because we're going through, we're running our numbers, Josh has his numbers, I have my numbers, we're both trying to make money for our clients. But in the end, we're just trying to give people a reason for the numbers. And some of it has to do with fundamentals, some of it has to do with the reaction to Greece, some of it has to do with us spread betting like handicapping a horse of what are the odds? Because well, Wall Street, well, Lee, to some let me extent, let me is a casino, let and we want to find good bets that it's going to be in our favor. So I, I, think that, I think that investors need to stop worrying about companies. I live in Albuquerque, and we make more Pentiums out here than any place else. We have a big Intel plant. I get people all the time come and say, oh, I, I buy Intel. And I say, why? Well, because it's local, and, and, and I hear about it on the radio. And I'm like, who cares? You've never even looked at a balance sheet. You don't even know where the semiconductors are heading. So yeah, I, I think that the old Wall Street concept story is Story-driven investing. It should no, be dead. Th thematic investing. Oh my yes. God, the story. All the things that have blown you know, that, people that's what, up. That's what this IPO crap there is There we go. And I'm just glad that we, we can wrap this up now that we've had our, when I went to school, I hiked 53 miles in the snow moment. <laughs>